Let me put on lip gloss. This lip gloss tastes so good. It tastes like cupcakes. And I love it. What's poppin' everybody? It's your girl Des, and today I am back at it with another video. But as you guys could tell from the title, today is a very, 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 very serious video. Um, yesterday, I don't know if I was just like in my feels or what, but I decided to film this video, and I think it came out really, really good. I was like very serious. I explained how like me and like the life being Des is like fam and like the whole motto is just to stay lit, stay up and stay positive. So like, you know, doing a video like this, talking about a subject like this, I just really wanted to be serious and take everything seriously and really explain what happened. And um, unfortunately, I've been having problems with like my SD card slash my camera slash my laptop. I don't know what the issue is, but I've been struggling. <laughs> Hi Dojo. Hi Mama. <laughs> I've been struggling to um, download a lot of footage. Like I'll film videos and then I'll try to like export it to my laptop and like literally it just corrupts. So that's what happened. I lost all the footage and I had actually posted on social media. I tweeted I tweeted on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Life Mean Dest if you don't already. Um, but I tweeted saying like, oh, like I have this very serious video. You know, I hadn't edited the video yet. I hadn't even like tried exporting the footage yet. I had just known I had just filmed it. So I go on Twitter, I tweet about it, I say how I'm gonna upload it. And then after that, I, you know, post it on Instagram, whatever, like new video, new video. And then I try to export the footage to edit it. And then boom, my SD card corrupted. So hopefully you guys are watching this video. I went out and bought a whole new SD card. So hopefully it works. And it was just the SD card, not my laptop or my camera. But we're going to find out. And um, basically that whole rant, I just want to clarify that this video is not going to be anywhere close as good as serious um as my first video because the first video i was like ready i was in the zone i was like i'm gonna film this video and i finally like built up the courage i had actually seen something on youtube about this girl who ex who escaped who escaped who escaped sex trafficking i came across the ted talk one and the specific speaker who was talking in this video i'll have it linked down below she mentioned how she had to forgive the people who did her wrong in order for her to forgive herself and i get so many comments on destiny why are you so awkward destiny how come when you do collabs with other youtubers you're so awkward like des how come you have no friends des how come you're always by yourself des are you gay des are you lesbian are you bisexual are you this are you that and i think that this story legitimately has changed me for life and it makes me more of an awkward person it makes me more self not self-conscious but more self-aware it makes me be very very hesitant on who i bring to my house on who i trust on who i hang out with on who i party with who i go out with and that results me in hanging out by myself because i'm just so afraid of anything like this ever 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 happening again but then once i watched the ted talk video and saw and listened to how she how to, like I said, forgive the people who did her wrong in order for her to forgive herself. That like was something I've never thought of before. Um, I obviously don't talk to anybody from high school because this situation happened in high school. And a lot of people ask me like, how come you have no high school friends? How come you have no friends from high school? How come you don't talk to this person or that person or this person or that person? And it's because of this story and I've, I'm ready to forgive the people who did me wrong, forgive myself, and to move past it and be the person I want to be. And to also be self-aware, be aware that this could happen, but to also not let this situation hold me back. Okay, so my my buns are a little lopsided, but just don't mind that. <coughs> Whoa, I got caught. <coughs> I'm 
All right. So, <coughs> me trying to be serious. I also feel like I should do a quick disclaimer and just say that I'm not filming this for pity, attention, views, money, attention, money, fame, nothing like that. Um, if you want to think that, you know, you do you boo, but I'm going to continue doing me. And I think that this story could help somebody because in my situation, I had like such good intentions and I really, really believed that everybody else around me had the same intentions. So... It just really comes to show like even your friends are really not your friends so like i said only doing this video for educational purposes and for people to learn from my mistakes don't do what i did honey boo boo just don't do it so it all started off when i was in high school okay i'm gonna make up some names i did this in the first video i filmed that got deleted and I think their names were Jordan and Matthew. So Jordan and Matthew were best friends. My boyfriend for three years was Jordan. Matthew was my friend since elementary school. We had went to the same elementary school. We were friends, whatever. And then in high school, I met Jordan. Me and Jordan started dating. Jordan and Matthew met and they became best friends. So I kind of like knew Matthew already, but obviously like he was just a homie. And I think I look really washed out now. So hopefully the lighting fixed. I swear there's something wrong with my camera, you guys. But, um, yeah. So that's that. And Jordan and I, we were a couple. We would go over to Matthew's house a lot. And we would all just hang out, kick it, turn up, drink, smoke. You already know. And I didn't drink personally. But this one night, <laughs> me and Jordan broke up. And I was like, I'm sad. My, my boyfriend for three years just dumped me. I think he had cheated on me. Like, honestly, it was a really on and off relationship since the start. So it's just like another breakup, which had happened like 20 times before that. So I was sad, but I kind of thought that maybe me and him would get back together. But then... Uh, Matthew comes through and he's like, yo, that's like, I know you're all glum, you're all sad, like, let's kick it. And I was just like, what? And he was just like, yeah, like, my homie, Kelvin, that's his fake name, he lived with his parents and they lived um, in a really nice house, like a mansion, and they were gonna, his parents were gonna be gone that weekend. So they were like, last minute, let's, we're having a little turn up, like, we'll go pick you up from your house and we'll take you here, which was like 30 minutes and he was like yeah like i'll do this for you i'll do that for you there's gonna be bud he bought me joints he bought me weed like he was like i got you and he was like um you could spend the night here at my friend's house calvin's house if you know he has a room for you in his mansion just for you and i was like <laughs> i'm not trying to be at home all sad over this breakup like i'm down come through so I go to my mom and I'm like, hey, yo, mom, I'm going to go spend the night at homegirl's house. And she's like, for sure, double deuce. And then my homies pick me up. I get in the car with them. They're all Snapchatting me in the car. And I'm just kind of like, what's good? And then I found out like months later, or, like weeks later, um, after that night, I found out that those boys were Snapchatting me in the car saying that I paid them. I think they said I paid them $40 to go pick me up and take me home. Or for me to spend the night i don't know but i remember that was like a rumor that went around school and that's kind of like what caused me to just not be friends with anybody because the fact that like my so-called friends believed that like i would pay money to go hang out with some guys like i was so sad over my breakup with this boy i had been with for like all of high school i was like sad you know the last thing i wanted to do was go out but because he made it seem so good he had bought me pre-rolls with wax and keef all over it i was like okay like i'm down and so you know i lied to my mom he picks me up we go in the car we go to his friend calvin's house and they have a bunch of bottles i remember they had gold bottles you guys they had gold bottles 
gold bottles. Um, and there was this like challenge that people would do. I'm gonna demonstrate it. Um, this is the challenge, okay? So you have the bottle. Let's see. So pretend this is a um, gold like Moet bottle type of situation. Okay, I don't even know if it was Moet, but it was some fancy ass shit that was gold. Okay, I, I don't remember what they would call it. I think they would call it Sky High, but they were like, go to Sky High, go to Sky High. So you have to get on one knee like this. Okay, and then you chug that shit. And then they, they decide as a group of guys or whoever was there would decide if you graduate or if you fail. They're like, you graduated sky high. Or they're like, nah, you failed. So that happened. And that's what I did. I wanted to be cool. I was like, let's get it. I'm fine to graduate. <sighs> Got super faded out my mind, right? And this was like a last minute kickback. He just found out that his parents weren't going to be home for the weekend. So he was like, let me invite a bunch of friends over. Let's get faded. But... There was a different mansion party that was like in the same neighborhood or down the street or something that a friend was having that he had been planning for like a minute. So it was like a really, really big party because it was like hyped, it was planned, everybody was sending it to everybody, people were picking out their outfits a week in advance. So it was like a turn up. So Calvin, the owner of his house, was like, yo, all of us, let's take this pre-fade over to the bigger mansion party and get real faded with everybody. Me, being a lightweight, I was like, I am already fucked up. I'm gonna go to sleep. And Calvin, being super sweet and gentleman-like for one second, was like, you can sleep in the room upstairs. Because when I first got there, I didn't mention this, but when I first got there, I had a backpack with all my clothes because I was gonna spend the night. And he was like, oh, this is your room. You can put your bag right here, this and that. So he had told me I could go up to that room that all my stuff was in and go to sleep. And then they would all go to the party and I would just pretty much be asleep at his house. That's when Matthew comes in and was like, look at what I bought you. I bought you this Keefe joint. Let's go outside and smoke it. Literally dragging me outside. And I'm like, nah, I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. And he's like, nah, like I'll stay with you. Like we'll go smoke this and that. And I was like, nah, I just want to go to sleep. So then we're outside, okay? And I'm trying to go inside, okay? And this boy's recording me. He was Snapchatting me in my face, okay? And I fucking fell and I chipped my tooth. And if you guys go back to old videos from summer of 2017, you might be able to see that I had a chipped tooth and my tooth wasn't chipped like evenly, it was chipped like diagonally. And that boy got on Snapchat, me falling down at that like little mansion party pre-fade. He, he got on Snapchat, me falling down and eating it and chipping my tooth. So that video went viral around school and that's another big reason why I have like really bad social anxieties because I'm literally just afraid of fucking falling down and chipping my tooth again, you know? Like it, that's like, what? Like how did that happen? But I was drunk and so that was super, super embarrassing but whatever. Anyways, after that I was like, bro, I'm really just trying to go upstairs and go to sleep. Like, you know, like look at me, you know, like it was embarrassing. And so, I don't know, I was faded, so like a lot of these memories I had to like put together through time because then everybody was telling me all these things that were happening. It's not like I just woke up and was like, oh, so this is everything that happened. Like I had to like digest all of the information and like really realize like what really happened because I was drunk. So I go upstairs and I just remember like little pieces and bits and pieces and bits. But what I remember, I'm gonna say. So I remember this boy getting a towel, Matthew, and telling me, we'll put this on the bed so we don't get it dirty. And I remember telling him like, why are we gonna get it dirty? Like, we're just gonna get it slayed. Like, I'm tired. And then keep in mind, Kelvin was wanting to get him and all his friends to go over to this other party. He wanted everybody out his house, but he said it was cool if I stay the night in that bed by myself. 
and he witnessed me say like let me just go to sleep by myself let me just be alone like he knew like i didn't want anything to do with matthew and matthew and him were good friends and so um he and he knew that I had just gone out of a relationship they all knew so Kelvin is like coming in upstairs and he's trying to grab Matthew like leave her alone leave her alone like let's go let's go Kelvin is like whatever dips to the to the party like literally you guys I was unconscious because I have absolutely no memory of anything but I'm I was unconscious once Kelvin left to with his other friends to the mansion party I was there with Matthew and I was unconscious obviously you guys know what he wanted to do and know what he did and all i remember was girls coming into the room like a group of these girls and i wasn't friends with them everybody i was hanging out with everybody who was at the house was not my age i was not with any of my friends i wasn't with alexa i wasn't with anybody my age i was with only upperclassmen or graduates and so a group of girls came in like barging into the room and i remember like getting up and like the blanket from the bed falling down and like my boobs were out and i was like what the fuck and like i had no clothes on at all and i'm freaking out like the lights are off so i can't see nobody's like faces good but I, I could tell that those girls were like upperclassmen i went to school with and that's fucking embarrassing like they just saw me like fucking naked you know so i'm freaking out i'm like what's going on like what just happened like like what the fuck and then those girls are screaming saying he raped you he raped you and matthew is like nowhere to be found so then what happened was that those girls ended up calling the cops. I don't think they told anybody they called the cops. And in that moment, nobody knew who called the cops. When those girls came in and like all that fuss was happening, there was a guy who came back because there was like a group of friends from like a mansion party. They came back to Calvin's house because they wanted to like continue with the party with just like a smaller group of friends. So this guy came, I'm gonna call him Santiago. Santiago comes and he's like I guess a very protective guy he's like all buff and shit and I didn't know who he was I had, I had never met him in my life he was like an upperclassman he might have been graduated already I'm not sure I'm pretty sure he probably was because everybody who was there was like way older than me Santiago comes and he's like did Matthew um and you like fuck like did you did did you guys like did you consent that and I was like I turn around and I'm like, we that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And I tell them like that better not have happened. Like I no. I like no. Like what the fuck? And then all I remember was Kelvin coming into the room with me, closing the door and saying to like stay there. And I was like, what the fuck? Like why? Like and I remember trying to open the door and he was like holding it shut. And then that's because Santiago started to beat up Matthew. And I had no idea what happened. And keep in mind, like, I've known him for years. He knew, he was best friends with my ex. So I assumed, like, he has good intentions out for me, you know? I assumed that he didn't do that to me. I was unconscious. I have no memories of that. And, um, <sighs> he was completely beat the fuck up. He had two black eyes. He had a broken jaw. Like he was so, so, so beat up. I didn't know why. But now I look back and it's because that, that Santiago kid wanted to teach him a lesson. Like, like give him what he deserved. Like they all knew he wasn't going to go to jail because they, cause I, cause I denied it. When talking to the cops, I said, no, that didn't happen. I didn't want him to go to jail. Genuinely, I just didn't. I thought he was my friend. Um, I'm editing my video and I just want to add in that once like obviously the cops had to call my mom and like my mom had to come pick me up. The cops told my mom what happened and that they think that I had gotten raped. And so I remember like my mom asking me like what happened? What happened? Like let me see your body. Let me see your body. And I just remember like having bruises all over my body you guys. There was bruises on my boobs on my neck there was bruises on my fucking like 
private part like down there like there was bruises on my stomach on my hip there was legit you guys there was bruises on my hip like as if like i was like trying to like escape and like get away or something you know or maybe i was just fucking like being abused but like i remember like i could go to like my dropbox and see photos that i took of my bruises so Maybe I'll add that in just so you guys could like literally know like I woke up with bruises the next day And if you guys go back to my old YouTube videos from summer 2017 when I had my chipped tooth You'll see that I had bruises on my body. I had bruises on my arms I had bruises everywhere you guys and that just shows that I didn't want this to happen This is the truth, you know as much as I want to deny it and say that's not what happened You know like I would rather be a hoe who fucked my ex's best friend than be a fucking victim I'm being raped I'm being forced so please just learn from my mistakes you guys like for real don't trust anybody you know don't get drunk out of your mind don't take a bunch of drugs to fucking numb yourself you know like I don't know like go on a walk go on a run like just numbing your body and you know like I said like I was very upset I had just gone out of a relationship like I was down on one knee going sky high you know like and that's why I didn't want to see this person go to jail because a part of me felt like it was my fault and a really big part of me still hasn't forgave myself for what happened and that's why I struggle on making friendships relationships meeting guys i went to the mall the other day and this guy asked me for my number and i was like hey, psych and then this other guy fucking came up to me offering to clean my shoes and i was like push out and like he was hella talking to me and like just and i just like like y'all sweet but like i'm so scared of that happening i'm just so scared you know, like drunk or not, it could have still happened, you know, and it could happen to anybody. So just really, really, really be cautious of your surroundings, you guys. Be careful. Know that I love you. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button if this video helps you guys be a little bit more aware. If you have some friends or family members or cousins or anybody who's needing to hear a story like this to be spooked, fucking send them this video. Forward them this Tell them they gotta watch it so that way they could learn from my mistakes because that would be so sad to have anything like this happen to any of my beautiful best friends. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so y'all don't miss out on any future videos. But most importantly, you guys, don't forget to stay lit, stay up, and stay positive. Double deuce until next time.